In this video, I want to talk about pens and both drawing and writing. Um, you may have picked up through my videos that I'm a pen and ink artist. I've been a fine artist for a long, long time. And um, I love pens, um, fountain pens, technical pens, any kind of pen. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this video, we're going to talk about glass pens. But... Before I get to that, let me just show you a couple of them. These are Hunt Speedball nibs in Hunt holders. That one and this one. This is a crow quill. And I have always said that if you really want to learn pen and ink, you go back and you start with a crow quill because you have to learn to control the ink flow um, in order to either draw or write. The issue with a crow quill, um, it's a metal steel nib made in the USA. Um, I believe they're still made in the USA. They're also still available, even though um, they've been around for a long time. There is, even though they're steel, there is some flexibility in the nib. So the crow quill allows you to make very tiny dots or wider lines or narrow lines. It's very versatile even though it may not look it. Now, in addition to their um, standard pen holders like that, here's a beauty. This is the uh, Speedball Auto Feed Pen Holder. And it's really a pen holder more than a fountain pen because it can take all of the standard nips. So it's a pen holder. And what it does and why it's so wonderful, um, first of all, you can use all of their standard nibs in it. You can't use the crow quill. That takes a special holder. But what it does, it's like a fountain pen. It um, has an ink sack and it's a lever fill. But what it does is shoot the ink down this brass valve, which then automatically loads the nib. It's a wonderful, wonderful item. Um, the problem, and the problem with some fountain pens, first of all, you have to wash this out um, after each time after you use it. And I just don't want to break that valve, so I'm going to do this in a minute. You have to wash it out each time you use it. Um, the other drawback is, for some reason, the way they made these, <coughs> back in the 50s and 60s, um, they made it so that it's a little bit difficult to get the section out. So in my case, I could struggle with it. Um, I did find a link on how to get it out from the Fountain Pen Network, or I can send it to Pendemonium, which is a, um, a company that does things like that, and ask them to put a new ink sack in it. So there's a little more maintenance and care, which is also true of many fountain pens. Now, I don't have my good fountain pens here, but this is a Parker calligraphy set, which is wonderful. The Parker sets are wonderful. Um, and you can get ink converters for them. The problem with both these, except for the dip pens, it, you can't put India ink in this, and you have to wash it out each time. Shapers, um, and I have all different kinds of shapers, you either put a converter in it, or you run into the expense of the cartridges, which are currently about $6 for five, which is pretty expensive, um, considering they used to be a lot less. And then you have a technical type pen, which you fill with ink. All of these take maintenance, all of these take cleaning, and all of them take specific inks. Conor Ultra Draw is the best ink for technical pens. Schaefer needs any kind of a fountain uh, pen ink or uh, their cartridges. This would do best with fountain pen ink. 
So as I've been thinking about a project I'm doing and service dog sets, even though this is a wonderful automatic feed pen that I could use a fountain pen ink without a problem, if I go to letter the words service dog on something, I have to go back to the um, original type of holder so that I can use India ink. I do have an Osmoroid India ink fountain pen, um, which they're very rare. They're, they're hard to find. The problem with it is it's it, not all it's cracked up to be. Mine clogs anyway, even though they're not supposed to clog. So you can see that all of a sudden when you like a lot of pens, you have to match the pen to the right ink. When I, um, I'll include the link for uh, filling this in the information section, but the man that made that video suggests that you use Noodler's Eel ink because it's a lubricating ink and it will um, prevent rapid breakdown of the rubber sack, which is really uh, saving you the trouble of mailing it out if you can't get the section out. So again, a lot of maintenance and matching pen with an ink. And even though the crow quill has always been, okay, well if I need to use one pen with all inks, I would grab a crow quill. Um, I'm finding that glass is the same thing. Now, these are two different glass pens. They're beautiful pens. Most are made in China or Taiwan. Um, so, when I use this, my underlying thought is, please don't eat your dog, <laughs> which I hate to say. I, I'm not sure if they eat dogs in China, but I think so. Um, so, that's the negative, is that buying it from China means they probably don't respect dogs like I do. Um, the positive of this, well, another negative, even though these two pens are so different, the nibs are almost identical in size. But here's an advantage. Here's Mount Blanc ink. It's like 15 or $16 a bottle. FW acrylic, which I use for my, um, in my rapidograph, you can put that in rapidograph for um, color. But it's an acrylic ink. It can't be used in a fountain pen. Um, this is Pelican drawing ink. It's vintage, brown. But it's one of those inks that, well, they say technical pen, but it might clog. Um, and then there's Higgins Black Magic, which is a uh, permanent India ink. It's, the, I think, the best. Now, I haven't included Sumi here, but I plan on grinding my own Sumi ink and keeping it in a bottle um, and trying to use it with a pen because it's also a permanent ink. And then Parker makes their own. There's so many fountain pen inks out there. But when this guy suggested um, eel, Noodler's eel, most of my fountain pen inks are Noodler's. Um, Noodler's eel is uh, $15 a bottle. It comes in different colors, but it, and I'm thinking, you know, why am I thinking of spending $15 per bottle of ink if it's not a special project? In other words, um, a glass pen, you can dip this into any ink, and you can, um, you, so you lose all of the complication of what pen am I using? I'm limited to these inks. Oh no, I have to buy more ink. Um, so here's an ink that is basically, I only use um, with a dip pen or in a rapidograph. And I'll show you something else. Um, today is Sunday. So you're going to get one nib size. And I have to mention uh, PTSD and service dogs and writing and seizures. So when I show you this, if I move this stuff off of it, maybe you can see. I wrote Sunday because today's Sunday. Now guess what that tells me? Um, as a person with a disability, it tells me how I'm doing. 
because when my handwriting is shaky, I know my blood sugar's off, or I'm having a seizure, or something. So now, if I write service dog, I'm helping myself, because I'm saying, okay, I need to get the dog. Now that's the extreme side of it for somebody like me. But the advantage for everyone is that what these pens force you to do, and I'm having a little bit of an issue here, is develop your own handwriting. So a lot of the sellers of these pens, uh, one of the things they recommend is that you, you make your signature your signature by practicing your signature. And they say that uh, fountain pens or pens, individual pens, are best. This one's giving me a problem, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, because people can't imitate your signature. And then, if you take that to the extreme, in my case, if I ever had to prove that it's me that owns my dog, then I need to have my signature. Now, what this nib is doing, and you can see how it fills, one of those spirals has the lead ink on it. And I don't know why this is doing it, because it wasn't doing this uh, yesterday. I ha actually haven't used this one very often, so there could be some residue glue or uh, something on the end of it. It's not the way I'm holding it, and it's not the actual pen. Yesterday, I wrote um, quite a bit with this one. So what we're finding, uh, that one is brand new. This one, all I had to do was turn the pen a little bit to get the ink flowing. Now that is a lot easier than um, cleaning a nib to get the nib flowing. It also could be I'm applying too much pressure because here we go, now it's fine. So that's your biggest problem with a glass pen making sure you're on the lead ink flow spiral and watching your pressure. Now, the beauty of it, I dip this in water and I'm done. The only, uh, a couple of people have said they've broken them. When they ship them, they give you plastic covers like come on paint brushes. Keep them and after you wash your pen or dip it in water, and this one, I, I've got to get this one going. Um, you put that cover back on it, and it protects the chip. Now, I'm actually glad this is happening, because I don't think I've used this pen. And if there is residue at the chip, the only other thing that could be is that the chip is somehow chipped or something. or that I don't have enough ink on it. But what I found out with with glass pens is the convenience of not having to do anything as far as maintenance, except figure out why this is doing this. Now, because it's never been inked before, I don't see any chips. And there we go. It might have just been I needed to get the residue off. Now, I have a turtle drawing coming up. And I want to do the turtle in stippled pelican brown. And I'm going to use a glass pen. I um, did yesterday. See, that was residue. This is fine now. Um, I did yesterday when I was writing with the smaller one, I did get a couple of blobs. So you still have to watch your ink flow. You still have to know what you're doing as far as um, 
putting the actual line down that you want. But I can't think, right now I am in the middle of packing. So all of my pens have to be cleaned and packed away for a little while. And this is the absolute easiest pen for me to keep with me. Much easier than a crow quill because a crow quill, um, although the crow quill gives me more flexibility in the nib, it still has to be cleaned. It still needs some maintenance. Um, I have ruined maybe a hundred different nibs over the years of a crow quill because you lose the point. I think that's less likely to happen on a glass pen. So um, let's try it with the fountain pen ink <clears throat> on, and I, I don't have any water here, so there's going to be a little bit of green in my blue from now on. Let's try it on a hanky. And there is a blob, but once I get the blob off, this writes beautifully on a hanky. I got a couple of blobs. But again, controlling the ink flow, I have too much ink on there, which is why I got the blobs. And this is all washable. That won't come out. The acrylic might not come out. But I can buy cheap fountain pen ink or whatever is available as opposed to expensive fountain pen ink. See that? Isn't that wonderful? And so when I get the blob, it's because I drag it a little bit. You can almost use it like a sumi brush and get thicker and thinner lines. So it teaches you to control things. It teaches you to perfect your handwriting. And you can't cheat by using a calligraphy nib. You have to develop your handwriting. And it, it's wonderful. This is what writing really is, is developing your handwriting. So glass pens, if you're thinking of getting into fountain pens, if you're thinking of doing stippling um, for art, I am going to do the turtle drawing in one or both of those glass pens. Um, I'm going to use the vintage Pelican ink instead of a crow quill. And all I need to clean this up is water. They're very inexpensive and I have to excuse the fact that they're made in China. If we could get some American glass blowers going, we'd be all set. <laughs>